Alright, um, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us in Peek Into My Class February edition today. Um, so, for today we have three speakers. The first one would be Associate Professor Dr. Nur Azza Hamzaid. She is an Associate Professor in Biomedical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering UM. Uh, she is also is the Head of Research Training Unit uh, of EDEC. Okay. Um, so you will get to know her insight in her own classroom later. All right. Uh, the second one would be Dr. Alwani uh, Ghazali. She is from um, Academy of Islamic Studies. Okay. Uh, she also have been an active participants of EDEC training. That's for sure. Okay. So, and the third one, last but not least, is Madam Shirin Alwi. Um, she's the pharmacy lecturer in Faculty of Pharmacy UM. This is a very new faculty, so maybe we can get more insight on how pharmacy lecturer um, organize their class, uh, run their class. So with that, um, the floor is yours, Ataza. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Very good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Aza. So as Umu mentioned, I'm from Faculty of Engineering. Is that you? Faculty of Engineering. Um, I'm also uh, part of ADAC family. Um, it's a bit nerf nervous for me to share my classroom to the public, but um, I'm happy to share. I'm happy to share. Very happy to share. Um, I welcome all of you here. Um, <clears throat> So uh, I didn't prepare any slides, but um, I'll just share some insights into how I run the class. OK, um, basically, we all know when we run a class, we have to start with the preparing, preparing the class and then um, we kind of prepare for the whole for the whole semester first before the even semester starts. We kind of know what the whole semester would uh, entail the the assessment, the topics, uh, the timeline of everything. Yeah, and then we run the classes. Every week, OK, for me, um, doing class online is. I think for most of us doing class online is uh, something different and uh, it requires a whole new skill set or an, an adapted skill set. I must say when we do online classes and then uh, there's the feedback part. So the, the checking part. Okay? So if you remember in your. Um, pardon me for, for referring to your KPI, eh? but the teaching, teaching and learning part, we have the teaching and learning section. We have the PDCA, right? So the planning, delivery, check and act. Right? So the planning part I've mentioned, the delivery part. This is where you are with your students like, like I'm with you right now. Okay, the, the delivery part, the, the, the action, yeah, the, 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 the teaching, the, the, the actual scene, and then the checking or the feedback part. Um, this is where we check our own practice, whether it works or not. And we, I like to reflect after every class. After every class, I will ask myself, uh, how did the class go? You know, I'll spend um if it was a physical class session i'll spend somehow like a few minutes to half an hour just hanging around and um looking at uh is there any <coughs> students who who would want to have a follow-up session and then maybe uh some of them who are still around i will ask uh, tak tadi? was it okay my did you understand you know i i did i, I did that thing and then um, when it is online, like we have right now, we have the recorded version of our sessions, right? So um, I, I run a quick through of the whole, not, not the whole, whole session, but uh, parts of the session, okay, of the video session, just double checking and uh, checking whether um, the delivery was okay, the student's response. I was more interested in the student response. So I'll talk more about the student's response 
um, in a while. And then also uh, the students' performance, their quizzes, their assignments, their um, in class interaction, okay, in, in class interaction or their, their feedback. So the ones that we scored, um, I, I hope you know about um, formative and uh, summative assessment. Yeah, the ones that we we test or we 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 give them tasks in order for us to know how they are doing compared to the the ones that we are grading them. OK, so those are also uh, some of the things we uh, I would seriously look into and um, try my best to do it throughout the semester rather than you know, at the end of the semester or even worse there were times that um, we, we were we might be too busy we just teach 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 and at the end of the <laughs> yeah teach and then at uh, when it's time for quiz we give a quiz but we don't give the feedback when it's time for assignment we just give the assignment at the end of the semester then we start uh, okay uh, correct by you know um take back their assessment and their um, answer script and start marking by then they've already finished the whole 14 weeks and they have already done you know the damage is already done if they don't if they didn't understand the things that you teach in week three that may have required to build up the knowledge into week four five six it's too late to fix that already yeah I got a comment from someone quite senior. Uh, uh, it's OK. That's the reason uh, we mark everything in the end so that we can help them. I was. I was. I didn't quite get what 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 did this person mean when he said it's OK to mark everything in the end because we can help them. And then um, as I probe further, uh, so if they don't do well in the final, we can increase this mark and then so um, I don't know if I agree with that. So um, my perception is uh, what we want. OK, what what we want is for the student to get what we want to uh, what the learning outcome okay, of the whole class. OK, so it is important to have that um, series of checking checking uh, feedback okay giving them back their quizzes giving them back their test scores their assignment um, if it gets really overwhelming okay when i was uh, less busy with administrative tasks and i had almost this is when i was a very very new lecturer and i only had one class to handle i think my whole life in UM was to give out assignment and once I get it, I check every single thing and then the next week I return. So I return it to them. So there, there was test or assessment or something at the end of every class. This was when I was, you know, very early. I didn't have any other things to do. And I realized it's not as practical as we can, we would like to be. So we started um, uh, highlighting on inside the classroom um, feedback, whether they can do it or not, or if it's an assessment that we give out to them that we look at back, we look at it. Uh, uh, I mean, the, 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 the key tests or the key quizzes okay, or the midterm. So even that, sometimes we have a delay in two, three weeks. Okay, if you ask my student, um, Somehow they are not expecting the marks to be that early, but uh, I, when I gave it to them, uh, they 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 were able to look back at their answer and correct their understanding. And the ones who would like to increase their marks will have a chance to negotiate and ask with me. And for, uh, some of them even uh, ask uh, in terms of the understanding bit. Okay. Um, in terms of assessment as well, um, there were times when I did oral assessment. 
I'm an engineering um, lecturer. So a lot of times we look at their answer script and their calculation and their answer on paper. OK, um, I tried out oral assessment one time. OK, and that was during week uh, 12 or 13. And I say, OK, these oral assessments, I open it for you in order for you to increase your carry mark before I finalize the carry mark. OK, so most of them, they already know where they stand in terms of carry mark. And some of them are really poor in, the, in terms of carry mark. And uh, I was concerned to let that go to the final exam without, without you know, if, if the carry mark is really low, if it, the carry mark is really low, it's either they don't understand the whole thing, the whole 14 weeks or 10 weeks or 13 weeks. It's either they don't understand or they don't know how to express it. So I tried out once oral assessment. OK, so um, oral assessment in engineering takes um, maybe in medical or in health sciences or in health um, faculty or disciplines, it's it's more commonly done. But in engineering, perhaps, or in, in, in technical subjects like mine, it's a little bit um, uh, not common. Okay. So what I did was I did the uh, oral test where they give me the list of names. Whoever is interested, okay, whoever is interested to do the oral test, give them, I give them, um, uh, they submit their names to me. I had my uh, RA, one of my PhD students at the time, to help out with the... Uh, organizing and um, um, standing by at the lab, you know, and I'm in the other room. So when the time comes, they come. This was before COVID, eh? they come, they come and they uh, tell their names to my PhD student. My PhD student will give them, okay, this is the, the question that you have to um, answer orally. Okay, you have time to um, do the Calculation on your own on the side. Okay, so when Dr. Azar is ready, you could come inside. So, so while I am doing the oral exam with my students who in my room or my my area, the 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 next student in line is already in the other area, waiting to be called and preparing with their calculation. Okay, they start um, trying out the calculation themselves. OK, so when the time comes, OK, so this student finish, I'll call, OK, next student, please. So this student will come, then this the student will in line waiting, will come in and uh, they will sit in front of me. OK, what question did you get? OK, so they will say, this is the question I got. OK, tell me how you, how, tell me your jalan kerja, your, your, your work, your workflow. And they start explaining to me. And they start, OK. They start explaining to me, uh, and that was when I realized, lah, budak ni sebenarnya tak faham yang itu, you know. That was when I realized there is key understanding that they didn't understand. So, with oral exam, is when I get to fix. It's not just for me to assess, but for me to assess and fix, so that in their final exam, that misconception was fixed before the final exam comes. So in the final exam, Alhamdulillah, I think during that batch, all of them passed or maybe one or two still failed. Yeah, um, it's, it's a very technical um, subject. So uh, that was how I I did my assessment. And from that assessment is also how I um, I use that assessment session okay, to uh, not to teach, but to correct their misunderstanding there and then. Because when they when they speak, you know, sometimes when they when they do calculation on paper, if they get wrong, they get wrong. I don't even, you know, I yes, there's there are some some mathematical no, equations and yes, some mathematical equation on the paper, and and uh, but the answer is wrong and. Sometimes it's really hard to track which part is wrong and uh, I want to help. But, uh, you know, the, uh, the final answer is wrong. Jalan kerja is somewhat right, you know. So these are the cases where uh, oral exam really helps 
uh, fixing their misunderstanding. Um, you know, sometimes uh, they didn't realize uh, radius and di uh, di uh, diameter. In, in this case, you have to use diameter instead of radius and radius and diameter, things like that. Or the direction of movement, right? Direction. Or you own the, the, the forces only appear when you separate the components. These are statics, you know, some things. So they don't, and they keep drawing the forces, even they don't separate the component, things like that, that, um, that are key steps or key understanding that they didn't get. Okay, some people need more time and more repetition than others in order to get something. So yeah, so those are about assessment. All right, and um, uh, for all this, we, we have our uh, Final reflection. This is our, I don't know, um, in other fac in other faculty, but for us, it's our borang sembilan. If I'm not wrong, where we look at the. This is at the end of the semester when we look at everything, and then whatever we want to fix, we fix. Whatever lesson learned, we can only fix with the coming semester. So, um, I would prefer if that fixing happens in with that same cohort that we we went through right rather than uh, yes we learn something and we want to fix it we fix it with the next batch 50 percent okay 50 percent not okay because why yes we are able to um uh improve our whole class delivery method or assessment or whatever but the batch of student is already different you couldn't help that individual student that you want, you wish you wanted to help if you only look at it at the end of the session. OK, so that's my take on assessment. My take on assessment is uh, on teaching and learning as a whole. Yeah, we use the assessment in order for us to see who we can help more than others. Some people, we they don't need much help. OK, some people need more help than other people. So it's our job to identify who we need to help more because in the end, our job is not to to label them. OK, ni budak pandai, ni budak sederhana pandai, ni budak tak pandai, ni budak B, ni budak C. Our job is not to label their ability and their um, understanding. We are not here. We, we, we are our job is not to label them okay previously it might be like that okay, i don't know uh, i might be wrong but if you don't do that frequent close loop feedback you might believe that okay your job or your role is to put stickers on them okay this is a plus okay okay you give out it's like a test you know? you teach everyone get the same um, instruction, same uh, lecture note, same, everything the same. Okay, so you are being very fair. You are being fair. You give everything the same and then in the end or, or in the middle of every, every time test, it's for you to see okay, how, how much they understand. Pandai ke tak pandai, bagus ke paham ke tak paham, you know, those kind of thing. And then in the end, you put a final ribbon, you know, Ah, A. Okay, I, my class, uh, only 2% blue ribbon A plus. Okay, uh, most of them are B. You know, so you, you are, you're very happy to see that, 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 apa tu? Curve yang, that curve tu. Apa panggil tu? You that curve. You're very happy to see that beautiful curve. But if we understand the spirit of OBE, okay, outcome-based education, what you do, what you want to do is to shift that curve to the higher end. And if possible, no one should be in the middle or in, in the bottom. You would, it's your job to push that curve to be, uh, saying it, to be on the, on, on one side, lopsided, okay? You want your curve to be lopsided because you want your curve to be, be, plus you know that that area b plus a a plus okay maybe a little bit of b and if you if the students really can't be helped then you know i i i, I strongly believe that i i should have power or i should have the inf 
I should try and have the influence to to affect everyone in my class. But if I don't, I can't do much about it. But at least I try. I try. OK, so. If I try and there are still uh, students who are left behind. I don't feel too bad. I don't feel too bad compared to I don't try at all and I, I let nature take its course. OK, because um, I remember our uh deputy vice uh, he was uh prof awang prof awang i remember his talk once which really opened my mind and my eyes he met he talked about um those days when when he was student when he was a student during his time students who got into universities are already cream of the cream they are the top there are only um, three universities in Malaysia. OK, those are during the time of our maybe our parents or maybe less uh, a little bit younger than our parents. So those are the days that uh, there are not many universities. So out of the population of Malaysia. There are not many people get into university. So this means those who are in the university are already self learners. They are already good at learning by themselves. They're already good. But now we have how many universities in Malaysia? Many, how many programs altogether in Malaysia? We have a lot of higher learning institution in Malaysia. So instead of having the top 5% going into UM. OK. Depending on the program, depending on the 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 let's 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 not look at how the schooling system and whatever, yeah. But there are more people, that, you know, from the pyramid, there are more percentage of people on the top that gets into universities. Having said that, it means that we are also not only getting the highest one percent or the five percent. Even now, we have pub, uh, private universities. Maybe the top percentage of um, families who could afford to send their kids to private university already sent to the private university. So we are tackling a bigger and less um, less homogeneous type of student. So we will get students who need more help than others. That realization made me realize, OK, we cannot compare zaman dulu dengan zaman sekarang. I always hear from uh, lecturers who are uh, who have been longer in the in the system, okay? They keep comparing. Student dulu tak payah macam ni. Sekarang ni student ni. Keep comparing, keep comparing. And I said, why are we comparing? Yeah, it's our job. Why are we comparing, comparing? Look at ourselves lah. Compare yourself with your own self last semester. Why are you comparing other people? Okay, so um. My take is do what you can or under your control, which is yourself. Stop. Questioning or complaining about things you can't control. Con complain about intake, lah, complain about this, complain. About, yes, if you can complain and it will help somewhere, go ahead and put your complaint in politely and uh, respectfully and uh, secara membina. But when things don't go your way, you complain. Ni tak, ni tak bagus, ni tak bagus. So um, I always think, what can I do? Okay, what can I do? So um, I look back uh, and uh, these are the things that I take in mind. And um, what I realize the most is we have we have to understand that batch of student. Okay. I would love to understand and get to know each and every of the, one of the students. I used to teach um, course that is a uh, smaller number in class. Uh, 25 students. This was during um, the prosthetics and orthotics batch of student. There were 24, 25 of them and I could understand. I could I know them because I know them in their lab. I know them in their class and I teach a few classes with them from their first year, second year. I could understand each and every one of them. 
But when I start getting classes that are 80, <laughs> 80 students in a classroom, 60 students in a classroom, I try my best to understand. And those who, you know, when we, were, when we had our classrooms in, in the lecture halls, you have the ones who are sitting in front, the ones that are always answering questions, the one that um, come to you, you know, they walk down from the from the lecture hall and get to you and ask you questions. I get to know them. The ones that are uh, copying with their friends, you know, I get to okay, um, I, I get to know them more. But when you have a big number of students, you only get to un understand and know a little bit more of that little selected few. Um, it takes effort to understand the whole class individually. Uh, you could what you can understand is the whole trend of the class whether they understand the topic cumulatively or not. So when, when you do things like Kahoot, when you do things like, um, um, you know, these online quizzes, you get a sense of the whole class understanding. But that's not enough compared to when I had the 25 students where I could understand, okay, Nazira macam ni, Jan Yao macam ni, you know. Each, I know that um, uh, uh, some of them actually didn't want to do biomedical engineering. They want to do medicine. You know, I, I I get to know their background story. I I, I sometimes I even know uh, that um, you know their family background and things like that. But when it gets to a big large classroom and you have multiple classes, pula tu, okay, sometimes it is really hard to get that personalized touch. So um, we try. We try where we can. We have to be creative. Okay. So um, teaching and learning and um, handling classes, um, classrooms or large classrooms, small classrooms, we have to treat ourselves as, um, I would say, artists. You, you, you have to put in your arts, your, your social science side of you, you know, whether you're an engineer or a medical, uh, non-human sciences background, you, Teaching is by by nature a uh, social a uh, humanistic or hu I, I I might have I might not have the right terms I'm talking about here, but it's no longer a technical subject that that teaching itself that delivery and teaching so find ways to make it interesting find ways to make it um, creative and engaging sometimes um, I design uh, assessment in order okay I'm talking more about assessment uh, right now. In order for the assessment to be not just an assessment in class for grades, you know. When I first started uh, teaching in University of Malaya, my first class was 80, 80 students and I uh, I teach elective subject. I was so excited, but nervous at the same time. I was young, baru habis PhD, young. But it was, it, after a while, it gets disappointing to me because the only time they will talk to me is uh, kenapa markah saya rendah, doktor? Uh, macam mana nak dapat, uh, kat mana boleh tambah markah, you know? Those are the only thing they will speak to me. Aduh, you know? Otherwise, they will keep quiet the whole class. They will hand in their assignment uh, re religiously, okay? Assignment, perfect assignment. But they will speak to me when their marks are not as what they want. So, I get the sense that budak-budak ni sebenarnya nak markah je. You know, markah je. Assignment tu, you know, in the end, they want the marks because in the end, they want the highest mark they could get. If they are aiming for an A, they want an A. That's all. They want to collect their A's and then get CGPA 4.0 and then that's it for them. Okay. So that was my feeling. It's a bit disappointing for me at the time that there was this was during 2010. And then I started um, changing my game. I changed my game how? by uh, designing the assessment to have more meaning. Um, I, I started to relate my assessment or my assignment with if there's a, a national competition, for example. I relate that as OK, whoever submit this uh, to a certain level, you could participate to this competition or that competition, national level, I will I will support you in terms of, oh, then they get excited. They get excited. Okay, so I, I see that, that was my first, um, uh, apa ni? my first realization that the assessment can actually be 
interesting and meaningful at the same time they are learning. So relate that assessment with the LOs, of course, but relate it with something that is because they are young. They are young, they are energetic and uh, they want to express themselves. Yeah, but they don't have the means when they come to class. They, they see the class as OK, assignment one. This is the question. This is the question. Submit by 5 p.m. whatever day. It's 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 disconnected from them. And where is the platform for them to to show themselves and do things that are exciting in colleges? So I see a lot of students who are very active in college, but in class they are not, you know, tak datang kelas, lambat, didn't turn in the assignment on time. So I realized what they are looking for is something that is more like like what the college is offering. You no, know, the the one that they have recognition on them. You know, you know this is the badge, uh, the the Facebook badge, and then they turn into the Instagram badge, and then they turn into the Twitter badge. The one that is about the spotlight is on them. So, I started to turn my assignments into something that they can realize themselves, where they can have that elements of individuality and 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 uh, express self expression and. You know, even in engineering subjects. So um, I started doing um, this was during before COVID. Eh? I started doing exhibitions and I in exhibition dalam, dalam UMJ, dalam faculty je. I, I don't have to go outside. The ones that are good ones, I, I put it as a carrot to go outside and I do bring them outside. Okay, But the ones that are, that, that I cater for for the whole class in inside of um, um, my class, um, I set up my own exhibition day, so I talk to Deputy Dean of Development, get the you know that that um, poster boards, keeping jam and arrange and set up a day, and I invited my colleagues to become the judges, so it becomes more meaningful, more realistic. Okay, the the outcome is still what you would get from what you would expect from a non exhibition assessment, a normal assessment where they hand in a report and you know a prototype as, as a class assignment. But I made it as. An event so so that uh, that sense of what they can get in college, they can get in my class. So oh, OK, so and then. Um, uh, more a lot of more other things that I did in my class that that is non conventional I must say during my time I was I was younger I had more time this is when I learned to pick up all these uh, things from my students actually what do they like what what makes their learning meaningful and I make that as part of the assessment because I know students will want to score so when you gabungkan you you merge that that um, excitement to 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 express themselves and do something meaningful and that they could you know they could, they, they could take photo and put in their website uh, their own whatever facebook instagram whatever they want and the the part of them that want to score i merge them together so they have this this sense of yeah i can get an a and at the same time i can also get my you know my story my life story what what these youngsters want is life stories so if your class is not worth a story do you think they will be interested ah uh, lecturer ni okay tahu dah dia mesti bagi soalan macam ni you know soalan tak pernah tukar they never change their their question from the senior i can easily get by their class by getting um you know hand me downs from my seniors of what the you know I could practice and yeah yeah this class biasa lah biasa okay lah okay lah macam tu but you know give it a challenge not too hard because um we understand that they have other classes as well other courses as well to do they're not doing just your class so that that consideration has to be there but yeah the assessment so I I reduce my assessment from many, many, many assessment weekly into um, maybe two or three uh, plus the mid semester exam plus maybe one or two quizzes before and after. OK, but the, there's a big one in the end. 
that they they by force or by by voluntary they have to look look forward to that end game so this end game uh, during COVID-19 um, semester or even slightly before COVID-19 semester I've started to go into video making because I realized that they they they're good at I mean they, they, these are creative self learners you know they can pick things up themselves and you will be surprised at their content and their their hasil kerja you know their, their outcomes so I started um, putting in uh, uh, another way of looking at things okay so assessment doesn't have to be many but it has to be meaningful and it has to build from one to another until this big one so that big one is the one that you you know you give rewards yeah i am very uh uh kata apa tak lokek tak lokek eh macam nak cakap bahasa inggris eh you know I will buy chocolates, I will buy prizes, I will buy for them. Not just for that big one in the end, but also in the cl classroom, okay? Whoever gets this one, uh, one Snickers bar for them. Or um, during the assessment, my class is at 8 o'clock, for example, or 9 o'clock. I can't remember what time my class was. It was quite early in the morning. And we had midterm at the time. This was during uh, physical classes. I brought two bags, plastic bags of roti and I caught up. <laughs> I had my, I had my RA from my labs to help me carry roti and I caught up. Okay, I know uh, some of you just woke up from college, had to, you know, you, you, you have been studying last night, you have been uh, burning the midnight oil, you may not have time to grab your breakfast, you, you may have woke up late and ran to my lecture hall in order for you to do the test. If you want some food, just raise up your hand, we'll give it to you, okay? Or um, if I have a lot, many, enough, I'll just put on their table some uh, kuih or I, I, I always buy the, you know, the, the bundle one yang satu plastik besar, ada banyak-banyak 20, 30 tu. Uh, apa, cake lah, benda tu. Just put on the table, okay? So I get my RAs to help just put on the table because they have to, you know, eat and have glucose in their mind in order for, I want them to score and I don't want them to not score because they are hungry and their tummy is grumbling and it's, it's, I, it's my responsibility apart from teaching them well and empowering them to learn the right way and things like that. It's also during that exam time, I want to make sure that they are not distracted by their physiological needs. <laughs> okay, so I put in some of these are some of the things I do. And as I mentioned, the, the bigger assignment at the end, I make it like, uh, okay, do you have the big best, uh, best group? And the fact that I invited my colleagues to also evaluate the exhibition or whatever assessment it was, it, it tells them that I'm not the only one looking and uh, the marks that they get or the price that they get is worth from someone else. It also f comes from someone else. Yeah, so those are the things I did in terms of assessment. I would like to share more, but I will stop here. It's 10.40 now so that uh, my other colleagues uh, can, can share their bits. Maybe at the end of the session, if you have any more questions for me, um, I'm more than happy to answer that. So I'll pass back the floor to Umu. Okay, I'm very aware of the time. So I'll pass the floor back to Umu. Okay, thank you, Dr. Azza. You're welcome. All right, uh, so Dr. Alwani, are you ready? Yes, okay. Can you hear me, Umu? And everyone? Yes, and clear. Thank you. All right. So, good morning, everyone. How are you? So I'm here today, not because I'm the best teacher to teach you, because I know you're great already, but you're being humble to attend our sharing session today. So what I'm going to do is to share what I have done in my class. Um, so I'm new actually to UM. Um, I started in UM 2018, uh, but I'm not young. I'm quite old. I'm in my 40s. Uh, 44 this year. Before UM, I taught in UIA for 
um, around 15 years or 10 years and then 10 years that's minus my PhD journey and then I went to USIM for one year so in terms of teaching experience well I've uh, done something in matriculation center but it, it's definitely not the same when teaching in the university where since 2010 we have to juggle teaching with other tasks which is very challenging okay i'm going to share my slide um, can you see anything at the moment uh, not yet Okay. Okay. Uh, we can now see your see desktop now. Yes. Yes. Can you see something now? I sh I'm actually on Canva. I'm going to present from there. All right. Uh, we can see your Canva. All right. Uh, the, the one, have you clicked your present? Not yet. I'm doing it. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is the title. Let's see how it goes. Right. Uh, this is the overview of my uh, my sharing today. Uh, my focus is actually on online teaching during COVID because the experience of teaching in uh, the normal classes, I guess, not so much. A difference uh, with uh, many many things we can do activities acting etc uh, for your information I'm from uh, the Department of Aqidah and Islamic Thought um, I think most of you can understand Malay so it's basically pasal Aqidah pemikiran Islam uh, quite a boring subject actually but I am from the um, the unit which teaches comparative religion uh, in that particular subject, we can do lots of activities. However, this semester, I was challenged to teach uh, the basic subject, which is Akidah dan Pemikiran Islam Semasa. Akidah and Contemporary Islamic Thought. Okay, so, and that is uh, a course which, uh, an elective course, just offered to all other students from other faculties and that was my first experience dealing with students from other faculties uh what was my reaction we will see later when online teaching started how was the journey what do i do in the recent semester what tools were helpful for me uh i will share in the end challenges and some of the joyful experience that I um, encountered. When we knew there was COVID-19 outbreak and we could expect that there, will, there would be some uh, amendment or some um, different way of tackling our teaching and learning activities, uh, we could expect that online was the only option that we had, right? My first reaction, however, was like this, almost exactly. I was so shocked because I originally, I do not like to do things on the computer. Uh, where it requires time and energy. I appreciate more reading and writing. <laughs> All right, I think perhaps most of us or some of us are like that too. So uh, online teaching means we have more things to do on the screen, preparation uh, to get uh, things done better. And more on the planning side, I uh, guess, as compared to the normal semesters. So it was so a daunting experience and overwhelming experience. Right. But 
I was lucky because during that time, I attended ADEC Emerald Teaching and Learning course, which is compulsory for new staff like me. And for the first time, the course was conducted uh, online. I learned a lot from there. One thing that I knew was uh, even the new, uh, I mean, even the old, the, um, the mature scholars in the university were willing to learn how to present online. I was so ashamed. So from there on in SAF, aku ni siapalah untuk tidak menggunakan dan belajar all these things. So I started relearn and learning new things from there. And I was also lucky because, again, um, there was an online course on Microsoft Teams, which I used in my class mostly, um, by siapa umur? Encik. Saya tu lupa nama dia. Encik Hilman ke Encik Ilhan? The, the session was interesting and I applied that in my class. Okay. So last semester, hmm, basically, Emerald teaching helped me a lot. I was mentally prepared. I could anticipate the overwhelming feelings in online class because I was overwhelmed as well with all the exercises and everything. Although the speakers tried their best to convey uh, lots of things as they could in, in ample time, uh, exercises were there, uh, spending time uh, with the screen, on the screen, um, it's really tiring actually. Because of that, because I knew that, I tried to simplify my normal lectures uh, as simple as possible, as simple as possible. Um, some parts in comparative religion subject appear to be philosophical, actually, because uh, there are things that need, needed to be understood um, by different angles. So I skip that part. I focus only on the LOs and uh, I chose the videos which could help them in understanding other religions. Uh, but the classes uh, back then in the last semester was just uh, three classes, right? So we had to do three online uh, simultaneous synchronous class. Uh, the rest, I let them um, do activities that are not uh, activities like reflection and so on and so forth, which means uh, I think most of the time for the subject, I, I was feeling guilty because I did not give anything to them except simple, simple tasks like yeah, reflection, squeeze a little bit of there and here. So I felt insufficient. I was, uh, at the same time, was rigid to my task, meaning the task, uh, the question that I created is something which not a win-win, a win-win situation. Um, maybe the students can get something from there, but as for me, the assessment was really, really, really time consuming. So I did torture myself in a way. Um, for example, for the final examination, I did not know what to do. For the final examination, which we call final alternative assessment. Okay, so the alternative assessment asked the students to uh, answer um, a reflection, yes, but in four pages. Uh, that was actually four pages maximum, but most of the students uh, wrote in four pages. And I had 96 students at that time, which was quite heavy for me. Apart from that, they also had two other assessments. Um, for I had to use uh, the, the old, the old assessments. One is a uh, movie review. They had to choose the movie which is which has a uh, religious element and discuss from there. So that was a group work. They done it well. 
they uh, created a video. Normally, they would present in front of the class. They would ask questions. So now they just sent the video. They, they did it very well, creative. And then the second one was, uh, this one is challenging for them. Um, the second one was they had to interact with any uh, non-Muslim, other religions, uh, and then learn from there. From that interaction, <clears throat> they asked about uh, the religion, like Hindu is doing this and that. Or um, Christians understanding about uh, praying, for example, they can choose one angle. Most importantly, the, end, uh, the output would be um, sending the journal to me for me to assess in the end, which actually showed uh, which, uh, a journal which proves there was some kind of interaction between them and the other people, the non-Muslim. Okay, some sent even um, the WhatsApp, etc. I accepted that as well because there was copy. Okay, but uh, the, the, the assessment was a, a torture for me since I had other administrative tasks to do at that time. New thing to me. <clears throat> okay, so this semester, when I got a new subject, I look at this most important thing on Proforma and design the course on my own, design the activities on my own. That's because I'm the only uh, lecturer teaching the subject and uh, I'm free to do so, to adjust the activities. So I look carefully at these. I had to make sure that these are reached in the end. So what did I have to do? I thought, then I adjust. This one, number two, is quite challenging for me to assess. How can I assess that? Assess that? Hmm. Because it involves the practical part. Whatever it is, uh, later I'll show you how I tackle learning outcome number two from the course. Okay, basically, I use Spectrum. Uh, not so much. Spectrum was used for the first class as an announcement for them to get into this, into this group. I gave a link of Microsoft uh, Teams, which I created earlier, and um, there was an announcement in Spectrum for them to create the first task. The first task was for them to introduce themselves using something which is called Flipgrid. I'll, I'll write it later. Okay, Flipgrid is used. Now let's have a look at my uh, can I go? Oh, can I go from here to show my my team? Other teams. Hello, Umu. Can you hear me? Sepatutnya boleh, Dr. Alwani. Alright, alright. Uh, you go to uh, uh, teams. Dah, dah. Rapat, can you see uh -huh. my 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 screen? So this is the subject. Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. So that word, that word. Uh, this was the first one. Clip grid is actually so interesting. Let's have a look. Nampak kan? Clip grid is introduced uh, to me by my friend from UITM. We can make short videos from here which is very handy, tak susah pun. I mean, a dummy like me can do it. Of course he can do. Uh, sekejap eh, mana nak tunjuk discussion, ah, mixed tips. Tengok sikit je eh. So, um, this uh, fleet grid uh, allows me to combine everything in one. Mana nak tunjuk ni? 
Um, 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 uh, okay, I think it's already here. Let me see. Hmm. Okay, 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 video tu je sebenarnya. Sorry dah. So buka je lah lagi sekali. Hmm, something wrong here. But it's actually so interesting because I can see all the faces of my students. Because he me. Hmm. All the faces I can see here. Jump, jump. It's combined in one video. Video two. Video mm -hmm. two, you can. Yeah. Okay, the video actually shows everyone's voice. Contoh lah, kita tengok. Ah, see? Yeah, this one actually. Assalamualaikum Dr. Arwani. Saya Nurul Ain Abenti Badrun. Dr. boleh panggil saya Ain sahaja. Ha, can you hear that? It can combine everything. Assalamualaikum. Ha, ni yang paling uh, creative sekali. Look at how he introduce himself. Paparan dia so cantik and so on and so forth. So that is click great. Now. So, and I also used Mentimeter sometimes, etc, etc. Uh, basically, oh, ni kat sini sebenarnya. Okay, uh, basically, uh, I had three times a synchronous session with the students where I lectured here okay when i had to uh, do it asynchronous, synchronous i either share youtube or shots in fleet grid like this one attendance as for attendance most my lecturers like to use it on spectrum but i use it here how do i do that I asked them to submit some, there are lots of things. Okay, tugasan, 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 by week. Some, sometimes they have to do it uh, in a group. Sometimes they have to do it um, individually. And sometimes I just ask them to submit their progress. Just want to see. Bukannya apa pun. Of course, sub, not all of these got marks. Uh, as uh, Dr. Azhar said just now, we want to see how they progress, we want to see the understanding, we want to see where can we help and interfere before it's too late. And memang, although this subject is simple, uh, as in they have learned these things when they were in um, sekolah menengah, I'm not sure why it is repeated. Uh, whatever it is, uh, they have learned this, uh, generally speaking, but there are some uh, misunderstandings here and there which needed to be uh, corrected. So in a way, it's very simple. It's an elective subject, okay? 
let's go back to my presentation. So this is the implementation. Uh, I decided to see their notes and uh, they were given 10 marks for that. Notes from, um, simple notes, but that was given marks. And then uh, for video activity essay, I gave a question on Khawarij, for example. I, I asked them to opt for video. Or essay, video tu cakap je. Okay, so Khawarij pada zaman ni siapa? Uh, they, they try to relate the current situation with the knowledge that they have learned. Uh, then 20% for in infographic and some sort of peer assessment. This one is for the continuous assessment. And for alternative assessment, uh, it is divided into two. Okay, satu tarikh ni awal, like few weeks, um, few weeks, I think week number eight, because uh, I consider that as a formative assessment because uh, I've covered all the parts, uh, uh, the whole part of, of that particular uh, uh, segment that they have to know. And then the second part was done on week 12. So, um, okay, let's have a look next. Okay, I've mentioned about this. Uh, I did not mention yet about Padlet. These are the tools that I used in my class. Um, did read just now, so many things can be done there. Padlet, let us see how Padlet looks like. This was used um, in... Um, in the previous semester, not this semester, comparative religion, but it's very long. It was tiring. It's it's interesting actually to have this sort of uh, apps to use, but you can um, you can choose what kind of of. Um, what kind of interaction um, that can be made using these apps. So, masa ni tak pandai lagi, so tengok panjang. And I knew somehow at some point, interact lah sikit-sikit. Somehow at some point, uh, ada yang copy paste, ni yang tak best. Copy paste, entahlah apa eh, dia orang rasa. Because it's like online learning, banyak subjek lain, whatsoever. Alright, so, of course, I'm facing a challenge this semester. Okay, if, uh, number one, that was because the first time I taught uh, uh, students from other faculty, you know what happened? For them, for some of them, I'm not sure of the the rest. One of the students did a complaint to my head of department. Uh, whenever she received, she or he received the final assessment, final exam question. In other words, the word that we cannot use for this COVID session. Okay. Uh, originally, the question like. I mentioned before here, part A was originally, part A originally consisted of one question only. That was only case study, video making and group work. Because there are some students from sciences faculty, pharmacy students, medical students, uh, medical students, I'm not sure, uh, pharmacy students, uh, there are pharmacy students, and the schedule are tight. Okay. I have asked actually the students whether they can manage group work if it is in form of group work. More, nobody said no, and only one student uh, asked me, okay, asked me 
uh, about the general format at the beginning. Okay, I just explained that it's a group work. Can you do it? Uh, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do it. Um, I'm from pharmacy, uh, pharmacy faculty, but I think I can do it. Fine. So, uh, I did not tell about you have to do a movie. You have to make a video out of the case study. The case study was about seorang uh, wanita bernama R and then dia ada masalah keluarga and then um, macam mana dia nak berdepan dengan kehidupan. There are three options pandangan kawan dia yang Muqtazilah, Jabariah and also Asha'ir. I want to see whether they understood the theory and then apply in the context of the life, pretending that they are this person. So since there was this com uh, complaint, which went to my HOD, if you were me, how would you feel? <laughs> so I was quite shocked because nobody said that uh, they disagreed for the group, group work. But the point uh, uh, raised was uh, not only the group work, but they have no access to proper software to make the video. Fine. So, fine. Uh, I, I, I listened to that comment and what the uh, head of department did was, okay, although the question was vet in the departmental level before I released the final assessment, an urgent meeting was called, okay, uh, following the complaint. So in the, in the meeting, it was uh, decided that I add another question which does not require the student to create a video, but which requires the student to do individually on their, on their, um, in their own pace. Okay, so that was uh, the challenge that I faced. The most joyful part of the journey is actually to see how the students grow, most of them. And they are very, very, very creative. Let us see a little bit of what they have done. Mm. For me, I was impressed with what they did despite their distance with each other. Okay, let's have a look.
Okay. So this is what I appreciated from the from them. And I also keep all the students' creativity, see how they have produced the infographics and my maps from the notes that I asked them to do. Not only notes, the infographic activities. Okay. So basically that's all from me. Ha, huh, yeah, one more thing. Um, I learned from this semester that I need to do improvement in some areas. Number one, instead of letting the 40% for the um uh, for the um, for the continuous assessment. I should change 60% for the continuous assessment because the students have been very busy. When I discuss with the students after they have done the first assessment, I mean the first final assessment, I ask them about the, um, the, the assignments still available that they have to do. They said, some of them said that they have 15 assignments dengan anak-anak lagi. Uh, yang ni kebanyakannya jawapan dari faculty science students. Uh, I was shocked. Tak sangka lah sebenarnya. And uh, one more thing. Uh, students from Sastra, Sastra, APM, they do not have that much assignments left. They enjoyed this, these kinds of activities. But I don't think that they... Uh, uh, they uh, they deserve only uh, a little bit of concentration in this formative assess assessment, which means only 40%. So allocation should be more than 40%. Eh, I mean, allocation should be more, put more on here, on the continuous assessment instead of the final one. Okay, that's the first strategy that I should be taking in the coming semester. And then um, options. If I really have to uh, provide something, which uh, a question, especially in the formative assessment, hari tu ada satu, the only question, right, was the video making. But uh, the during the urgent meeting, uh, the second question was very simple, very straightforward, and it's not even assess LO number two just now. How do they apply the knowledge, practice the knowledge, right? So in a way, I was not satisfied with that kind of, of, of uh, uh, not uh, different difficulty. Okay. And then... Strategy number three, instead of uh, instead of having everything stuck in since week nine until 14, actually I started way back from week one and continuously until week, uh, week number eight. But itu pun, uh, student has uh, have complained about how busy they were uh, so i decided to stop the continuous assessment at week eight <laughs> because i think i did this okay and then come back for revision week 12 week 13 for formative assessment hmm. Uh, somehow, uh, I would love if I, I, I had time to make a survey for my students to understand whether um, the complaint uh, was actually because of other subjects, not my subject. I would like to understand that, but uh, that was my suggestion to the head of department to understand the real thing, whether it comes from only one student or whether most of the students feel that or, or what, what was the case actually, survey. But since we did not have time at the time when facing that situation, so the survey was uh, was not done. Uh, if, if, if my wish was 
to conduct the survey so that I understand what was what actually happened that I can improve in the coming semester. Uh, so basically, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wani. Um, so can we have uh, Madam Shirin now um, for the next session? Uh, after all three speakers have um, shared their uh, experience in classes, then maybe we can have some questions. Uh, you can put in the chat box or you can just unmute your mic later when the Q&A session is uh, going on. Uh, Madam Shirin, are you ready? Uh, maybe while we okay, yeah. uh, Madam Shirin is here. All right, okay. Assalamualaikum and very good uh, morning. Uh, thank you, Puan Umu. Um, can everybody hear me? Can can uh, everybody hear me now? Yes, we heard you loud and clear. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me share something. Okay, um, Assalamualaikum again and very thank you. Thank you to ADEC for allowing me, for giving me the opportunity to speak here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to share what uh, we did in the faculty. Um, base, uh, yeah, so basically this is, um, we have um, not, not necessarily is uh, my um, um, methods so as my strategies, learning and teaching and learning strategies, but it can also be some of us in a group. Okay, so so um, Bachelor of Pharmacy is basically a uh, accredited program, a professional program, and it is overseen by the Pharmacy Board of Malaysia. So we have a professional body who look through, who accredit all our pharmacy program. So by so the board of pharmacy and also the MQA has its own list of standards what the student should be achieving at the end of the four years. So by um, usually by the end of the four years, the student should be able to do um, this, to do that, to be able to have some knowledge, to have to do some cognitive skills, to be able to do some practical skills and things like that. So we are te we as teachers in the uh, in the in the program, what we have to do is by hook or by crook, COVID or non-COVID, the students have to achieve all these PLOs that's necessary or all these PLOs, all these standards that's being um, by that's being set by the pharmacy board. Because if we don't follow, then the students would not be able to register as a pharmacist in Malaysia and practice as a pharmacist in Malaysia. Um, so how do we achieve this? How do we achieve the standards, the things that the professional body wants? So we have outlined some of the things. I've outlined some of the things that we do. Some of them are usually um, the normal things that we do in other faculties too. And some of things are very, uh, very specific to our faculty. OK, um, as usual, the normal online synchronous lectures, or tutorials, the way you have face to face and we come to class and teach and then get the students to answer questions and discuss cases and things like that. Um, using Teams or using Zoom, to, uh, Zoom and things. OK, then what we have is uh, we also have asynchronous lectures, uh, either using a voice over PowerPoint or using a video. So this one, it varies actually. Um, in the in our faculty, what we do is basically we load on, upload the videos or the PowerPoint presentation um, in Spectrum or in Teams, and the students will get to go um, to see or go through the PowerPoint presentations and videos during that allocated slot, allocated scheduled slot. 
but um, I have the opportunity to teach medical students too in the Faculty of Medicine. So Faculty of Medicine have a different way of doing things. What they did was we have to upload our PowerPoint presentations, our voice over PowerPoint presentations um, in Teams one week before the allocated share due slot. OK, so the students have to go through the um, lectures, the PowerPoint presentations, and when they come into our schedule slot with us, um, we do not go through the PowerPoint presentation again. So what we did is basically we just get the questions from them and discuss and clarify things that what they need, mm -hmm. what they don't, that don't understand from the PowerPoint presentations. So the students are on their own when they're doing their, when they're le learning from the PowerPoint presentations or from the video, but when they come to class, it's just basically a Q&A questions and case discussions and things like that. This is basically because the MBBS program has a lot of lecturers and um, we do not see them every week or we do not see them, um, yeah, do not see them every week. It, it changes a lecturers uh, week per week and module per module. OK. Um, other than that, I'm sure there are the rest of the uh, faculties also have this. We on for online case discussions, um, proposal presentation, role play. OK, we get the students to act in front of the camera. Um, is, is being it either is being assessed or is, is just an exercise. OK. Um, the same thing also for the final year students uh, thesis presentation, proposal presentation and things like that using teams most of the time. Um, for videos or for practicals, we have usually we use videos and give them stimulated data. So this is an example of videos that our um, medical lab technicians um, come out with. OK. Um, so the students have to, to go through the video because um, during normal normal teaching, I mean non-pandemic area, uh, non-pandemic era, usually we get them to go to the lab and do all these practicals uh, physically on site. But because of the uh, pandemic, so what we do was we send them this video and then they have to look through the video and we give them stimulated data. Simulated data in the sense that from that data, they have to write up a report and send in the report. Submit the report as a lab report. OK, so so this is one of the good things that comes with the pandemic that everybody has to learn how to do videos, including the lecturers also. I'm sure the rest of the faculty is also doing the same thing. Um, other than that, OK, like I mentioned earlier, we are governed by the professional body. So some practicals, they still needs to be on site. So we get the students to come in, we get special permission for the students to come in and conduct the practical on site. So we give them the facial, the mask, and um, they have social distancing, the physical distancing between them. Um, so we have to conduct, because of the sheer number of the class, students in the class, we have to conduct the sessions, a couple of um, sessions, okay? That is for practical. Um, one of the things that we also do is OSFI. Um, um, this is basically what it calls is an objective structured pharmacy examination. Um, usually this is a face to face physical. Um, last semester what we did was we managed to squeeze in one face to face physical. Uh, during the PKPB and the Basharat, but when it turns go it turns back to PKP, uh, we have to revert to online already. Okay, so during this um, objective structured pharmacy examination, or in short, we call it OSFI, um, we the students are being grouped into different tracks. Let's say we have three tracks, and the three tracks will go in simultaneously in teams. So then there will be have schedule. The first student will go to station one. The second student will go to station two and they will go to station three and they will swap. So each station, there will be an assessor or there will be an invigilator. So for example, uh, station one is more basically labeling, labeling of medicine. You get a prescription on how you label the medicine. 
Station two is device counseling. <coughs> device counseling, uh, counsel of the patients, how to use, for example, inhalers, how to use uh, insulin pen, how to use um, eye drop, how to use glucometers and things like that. So because of this being an online um, and then the students, because it, the students has to show the skill that they acquired the competence, competency to counsel patients in these devices, we have to get them to videotape themselves. So these are some of the examples, uh, some of the videos that the students sent in. But the setback is because they are not in campus, some of, most of them are not in campus and uh, some of them are at home, um, and we cannot send in the devices or post the devices to them, so they have to create their own devices. For example, in this video, the students are basically teaching how to use an insulin pen. So the insulin pen is from their marker or from their pen, uh, from your pencil or pen. OK, so that is a setback. So if the student comes back for physical on site OSFI, we do have all the devices for them to to proper counsel or to to play around with. And um, the in station three, what we have is that we have responding to symptoms. So if you look at this um, um, teams in the teams, we have nine channels. So the students are divided into nine. They each of them go into the nine channels. So in each channel, there will be an assessor. The assessor also will act as the um, um, patient. OK, so basically, let's say, for example, uh, I, uh, this patient comes in with um, stomach pain. So what are the questions the students should be asking and uh, what are the differential diagnoses that the students should be thinking of? Uh, what are the things that the student, students should be able to give and things like that? So this session is face to face online with assessors come um, patients. OK. Um, this is the first time we do it online, so um, it. It is a massive, uh, massive um, um, assignment and exercise it includes uh, almost about 10 to 12 lecturers and then about uh, three to four um, supporting staff for them to, let's say, supporting staff will be in the um, vigilating in the quarantine, post quarantine channel or pre quarantine channel to make sure the students don't discuss the questions with each other, things like that. So, yeah, it is something new then um, and it works actually. And um, I'm glad that one of our the coordinator for this is Dr. Nusaiba. She's also in this channel actually. OK, um, so this is this is also part of the requirement for the professional body. So we have to show them that we are doing this regardless whether COVID or non-COVID uh, um, pandemic. OK. Um, OK, this is an interprofessional learning course um, workshop between the medical students and the pharmacy students. Um, what we did was we use Google site as so um, we create a website um, for the both the pharmacy student and medical student to get access to because what happened is that um, for medical students, the prescribing skill workshop is not included in any module. It's uh, they are doing this when they are doing their attachment um, in the hospital. Let's say, for example, some of them are doing pediatric, some of them are doing um, medical, some of them are doing um, um, WUCA, um, primary care, things like that. So for the pharmacy students, this is also a part of a, a part of a module, which is hospital and hospital community pharmacy. And uh, it's also an exercise under that module. So it is not a module where both pharmacy students and medical students are registered in. So we do not have a spectrum web page for this particular exercise or activities. So what the teachers do is basically create um, a website through Google site um, um, using this um, um, using this um, platform. Let me show. Hold on now. Um, hold on. Um, um, you are. Let me see. Uh,
can you see my um, Google, my Dr. Yes, Shiri, yes, saya? Uh, can you answer your screen? Because currently we can only see the PowerPoint. Okay. Maybe you can share your desktop instead. Share desktop. Okay, hold on. Yeah. It's a far left. Far left, far left. Desktop. Good job, yeah. Okay, what can you see? Uh, okay, currently we can see your uh, Google Chrome. Um, a file site Google ePIL, correct? Okay, yeah, correct. Okay. So this is the Google site ePIL that we um, that we do for both medical students and pharmacy students. So we have module one, module two to module seven. Okay, so each module has their own. Uh, their own things that they are supposed to do. Okay, for example, in module five, they have prescribing, prescription writing. So in the prescription writing, we have a video we, we was uploaded how to write a prescription. Okay, so both medical student and pharmacy student will learn how to write a prescription by the video. And then on the next step, they will have dosage calculation. Okay, so the dosage calculation it's um, using a Google form. They have to submit the uh, uh, dosage calculation to us, so the uh, person in charge, and the person in charge will look through the assignment. Okay. For this, the student has to um, the student has to go through this one. They have to go through this um, module which is this website, the ePIL modules, before they come for their face-to-face -face, uh, online case discussion. So the students will go through this. This, this website will be uh, shared with both medical student and pharmacy students. So they will students will have to go through this uh, website before they come to face-to-face -to -face, uh, session, which is, um, is a scheduled session, okay? Um, they have class, they will have, they will divide it uh, into groups and each group will have both medical student and pharmacy student and each group will be led by um, either lecturers from either faculty, either lecturers from the medical faculty or lecturers from the pharmacy faculty. So we can have a surgeon um, led one, leading one group, we can have a pediatrician leading one group, we can have a pharmacist leading one group, we can have a pharmacologist leading one group, we can have a, a general a primary care physicians leading one group, etc. So um, the, the lecturers in charge will have their own set of um, answer sheets or discussion sheets, so what they're supposed to cover during the discussion, okay? So this is an example of um, using a Google site where Spectrum is not available to teach the students. OK, then what we have is. Um, OK, then the other thing is. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Then what we have is one of the things is also this is also part of the requirement. Um, by the professional body, the students should should have or must have at least uh, attached to um, industry attachment to have the attachment industry attachment in the community attachment attachment in the hospital. At the moment, the student still goes for the community attachment physically on site because they are going to any community pharmacies within their housing area at home and in their state, in their own home. 
Okay, they are still allowed to do as long as the community pharmacy uh, allowed them to come in. Um, for industrial attachment, uh, we are still hoping that the industry still um, will allow our students to go for attachment, physical attachment. If the, uh, I know some industry has posted this for the students to go for attachment, the students have to have a COVID-19 test and only the one with negative um, uh, result can only, only go for the attach attachment, okay? Um, some industries do have that uh, sharat for the students. Some industry is still okay. They allow the students to come in, okay? Provided they, the students doesn't have their, all the temperatures and things like that, all the questions that their students um, need to ask, to be asked. So if the, the, the industry attachment physical is not going to um, take place, that we have, what we do have is we're going to have a virtual attachment. So virtual attachment, we use videos such as the one that we have on the first uh, top two. So looking at the equipments, how the tablets are being processed, how the tablets are being made, how um, solution, uh, medicines, liquid solutions and things like that. Um, that that's the thing, the, the professional body said the students has to go for attachment by hook or by crook, COVID or non-COVID. So this is what we um, come up with Okay, basically um, to have the virtual attachment. Then for the hospital attachment, um, at the moment, um, UMMC said the students uh, can go, but it's not advisable because of the highly contagious, basically high contagious area. Okay. Um, so we do what we do also the same thing. So we do have uh, virtual attachment. So the students will go through the videos. They will um, look at the videos and at the same time, they also have exercises to, uh, to do between the each attachment. Okay, between the each department or each section between the attachment. Okay, so this is our examples of the video that we use. This is um, I'm using a colleague's video. Uh, we're still in the process of preparing for the UMMC video. Okay. Then uh, this is also another uh, virtual program that we use. Um, it's my dispense. It's being developed by Monash University. Um, it's given to us at the moment. At the moment, it's still free of charge. Um, it's not only to us, but also to other schools of pharmacy schools all over the world. So it seems that um, people from the UK, people from the even the Saudi or Dubai or Thailand and still using this My Dispense uh, program. Um, it's basically an online pharmacy stimulation that allows you to develop, that allows the students to develop and practice the dispensing skills. Okay, we use Avatar in this section. So this is an example. For example, in this, um, the first diagram, we still have also the, the Chinese Pachi, okay? Uh, um, this is basically a community pharmacy setting, okay? A community pharmacy setting where the patient comes in and asks questions. So what the lecturer has to do is to key in the information that the students, what are the information that the, would, would the students ask? Let's say, for example, whether um, what are the symptoms, how long have you had it, whether what have you done, what have you tried, what uh, medication um, did you use before, whether it works, things like that. OK, so those are the things that we the students have. We have the lecturers had to key in into the system so that when the student asks, then the patient, the avatar will be able to answer what uh, the students need um, to know. And from this, the students can also uh, prescribe what medication that is necessary. OK, um, this is an example uh, where a prescription comes in. This is a basically a hospital pharmacy. OK, a prescription comes in for this particular patient. So the students will have a prescription and they will look at the prescription and they can contact the doctor. We also have to put in the communication or the conversation uh, information with the doctor as the lecturer will have to key in it into the system. And using that, the patient, the students also will be able to select the medicines from the shelf, um, label them, 
and dispense the medication out with the counseling points and things like that. So this is a virtual um, online simulation patients online using avatar. Um, it can assess the students knowledge. It can assess the students uh, what the students need to know and all that, but it will not be able to assess the students communication skill, both verbal and nonverbal. So that's one of the setback for this program. Um, yeah, so to overcome this, to overcome where we would not be able to assess the, the, the students verbal communication, we usually get the face to face online um, communication comes. Um, yeah, face to face assessment comes in using teams. Uh, for example, in um, the one that we did in OSFI. OK, so this is an example um, of. Um, I don't know. This is an example of the uh, my dispense. So this, the patient says that, um, hi, can I see the pharmacist? I have the ep more episodes of gastric pain lately. Can I have something for it? So the students needs to ask questions. Uh, let's say, for example, um, what's the weight of this patient? Then um, previous use of medication. This is just now where I mentioned all this. Okay. Then at the same time, uh, what as the age, where the patient is smoking, okay. Then at the same time, you can also look at the shelf and choose the medication from the shelf. Okay, let's say for example, you're looking at digestive health. So these are the medication that you can give, the students can choose to give to the patient. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, yeah. Um, it is more or less what we need, okay, in terms of uh, getting the students to respond to the symptoms for the patients, okay. Uh, but the setback is it is still because Monash, this is developed by Monash Australia, so the medications are Australian medications, it's not yet Malaysian medications. So there's a difference, the slight, there are some differences between the Australian medications and categories of medicines and um, Malaysian categories of medicine because some in Australia, the medicine is considered as a, uh, a P medicine, which is a pharmacist item, but in Malaysia, uh, they are a prescription item. Okay, so uh, a group of us are trying to convert this uh, or trying to add in more Malaysian items to make it more Malaysianized, okay, so that the students will be able to apply this into the Malaysian setting. Um, okay, then um, last but not least, uh, what we have um, the other one, this is new. OK, um, like um, um, Dr. Alwina mentioned just now, we use movies um, to teach. We have this one module called Infectious Disease Module where the, the students cover um, bacterial infections, viral infections and fungal infections and some uh, and some others. OK, so then we use movies, for example, in this uh, contagion and outbreak, it's basically a viral pandemic. So we use it to for the students to understand more what about how is it being done? What are the policies? What is a pandemic? And uh, using that and to write a reflective essay on that. And also looking at the microbial um, um, part of it. OK. Um, Knowing our our current students generation of students now, they are more towards um, videos, and more towards um, more towards technologies, I uh, all those things. Okay, I'm not sure whether um, train to Busan or Maze Runners is also included because basically that's um, zombies, right? Okay. Um, okay. Then uh, last one will be assessment. Okay. Assessment, um, what we have is basically we have as usual the oral, oral uh, online oral or written assessment. Um, for assignment, let's say for example, you before COVID era, we usually get the students to come up with a 3D floor plan. 
Okay, but now because uh, it's a group assignment and get them to build a, a 3D floor plan, but because of this, each of them uh, are everywhere towards Malaysia, in the whole Malaysia, we are unable to do that, so we just get them to draw, okay, to draw the floor plan. And then others will be videos or wiki page and things like that. And practicals is usually video, um, the one that if you're assessing the psychomotor skills. One of the things that, um, so for the online written or oral, we have a exam hall like we have showed here. We have a exam hall. Um, so each of them, if the students will be at, uh, go to one exam hall and there will be invigilator. Okay. So let's say, for example, then each exam hall we have invigilator and there will be three invigilators in three di uh, different exam halls. Um, if you're the coordinator, you might need three devices to switch on all the exam halls if you need to have to have, uh, um, if you need to tell them something, it's much easier. Okay. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is also we um, we do scheduling. Um, like um, Dr. Awani mentioned earlier also, what the students complain of having too many assessments. Okay, so what we do is that we do, we have scheduling. Okay, so this is a schedule that we have. Uh, let's say, for example, in this section, in this um, uh, module, biochemistry. So, who are the teachers involved? What are the continuous assessment? When is the assessment date for the continuous assessment, the submission? And when is the uh, what is the alternative assessment? And what is the date of submission? So, because of this scheduling, okay. So, we know that the students would not be uh, do do not have. Let's say, for example, this one, okay. So we have each week, okay, each week there will be have at least um, two um, tests or two assessment and one submission, submission of uh, assignment or reports and things like that. If there is more than three or more than, th let's say for example, three tests, then we, shed, we shift the test so that at least the student would not uh, get to uh, stress out or work out. So we do this. Uh, we can only do this with our faculty courses. OK, um, yeah, we can only do this with our faculty courses. We are not going to uh, not able to do this with other courses, especially Chitra courses or uh, elective uh, elective law. So just imagine, let's say, for example, uh, in this week, the students have um, report ass assessment, then they have uh, case presentation and they will have video submission and add up with one Chitra or one elective courses. And that is why they they they, they will they will basically shout out, um, uh, shout out to people to shout out to the lecturers. They will have a lot of things. OK, so but what we can do as a in the faculty, we usually schedule this so that the students will not be overwhelmed. Um, put it in a maximum of two assessment or, or, or and one submission or two submission, one assessment or something like that. That's what we usually do. So I think that is my last slide. OK, um, thank you everybody for listening and I hope that you'll get something, at least something lah, from what we have shared today. Um, thank you. So if you have any questions, I, I can take some questions also. Thank you. Back to you, Puan Umu. OK, thank, thank you, you, Madam Sherry. Um, Dr. Azza, Dr. Azza, maybe you can moderate the Q&A session. session. OK, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sherry and Dr. Arwani. I, I also learned a lot from your classes as well. Young black, yes. black, you guys <laughs> are doing a lot of interesting, challenging things. We, we could all learn from each other, can? Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, any questions from anyone from the audience? Um, if you do have any question, you can just unmute your mic. We we are grateful to receive any kind of question for our speakers. Mm -hmm. 
maybe uh, in the meantime i can i can share my uh ms team I, i'll just share a little bit a glimpse of what um some maybe some tips i want to say uh, kejap ya i share my screen if i can Yeah. Ada lagi paper. Ah, ada paper. Mama. Yeah, saya. Mama meeting dia. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, okay. Desktop. Okay. Any questions? I can I can address. Okay. Ah, uh, in in my kerja ya. What I do. This may be useful for those of you who are struggling with um, getting response from your class uh, students is to make use of the chat section. So this is the chat section, okay? The chat section in your in our own classes. If you're using uh, MS Teams, it's over here. Okay, make use, make full use of this. Um, I can really ask questions from student and they can really answer here and all the responses here will appear if you want to look at it again it will appear here so these are my classes from previous uh, sessions and you could see the students responses here okay my internet is slowing okay i can ask okay tell me whether it's tension or compression okay so they can answer here so you could get a sense you don't need fancy additional software if you don't want yeah just use whatever you have in ms teams this is one um okay so you and you can see that most of them they will at the end of the class they will see a lot of say, thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so 45 responses all are thank you because you have 45 students in class but um you can see from my class okay i'm slowing down here okay you can see from my classes as well. Okay. They are answering there. Okay, for some reason, it's slowing down. Okay, they, they are answering here. All right, and they comment, they can comment, because we know students, or not students, even us, we we feel more comfortable writing rather than muting, uh, unmuting and asking, right? So you can see how they answer here. You can get lots of answer and I can get a sense of how much they understand the class. Okay, so um, if we get uh, a class online again next coming semester, my high recommendation is to make use of the in class session, the comment section on the on the on the side. Yeah, OK, it's really slowing down here. I can't show what I really want. You can see 182 replies. 80 replies from the class okay it's a it's a two hour class but uh, 80 100 something replies so these are all their responses during the class i make them think i make them answer there and then 145 replies these are the the the, the interaction that went on and then what i do is um i record everything and i put in file a download so download and i put the lecture note in spectrum as well as in here Okay, so you can see these are all my recording of the class session. Uh, class mechanics of material, uh, tare, and what time. So they can always come back to the classes, recorded classes. This is what uh, the advantage of having uh, online classes lah. Because we are able to go back to our classes day. The students are able to revise the classes rather than their own lecture note or what you know the, the the notes that take they can actually listen back to you rewind and rewind if they don't understand something so i think that is really useful because the one that's in post that's the one in the meeting channel itself the teams channel is up is only valid for 20 days so uh, what we can do is to download from ms team download for example this one dr chan uh, just did i'm sharing the class with dr chan okay you can actually download and save okay this one you click here okay open in uh is it open in one drive is it open in club open here okay if you don't know yet like if you already know this is um, not new to you open here 
Okay, and you can download the class. You can download. Download. So you have to download first, save it somewhere, and then upload it back. Okay, save, save it somewhere, and then up, upload it back in your files section here. So even for your own record, you can go through your own classes, you can see how the students respond, you can, you can even make this um, as a material for flip classroom for the coming semester. So let them listen to your previous class lecture and then during the class session, you only uh, discuss and pick up the important points. OK, so and then you post it here. This, these are the classes. Okay, it's, it's really slowing down. I can't show as much as I want. Yeah, so the recordings of classes are also here. Dr. Chan also put him his own here. Yep, meeting and uh, Actually, we have access to this. I, I think there's a really huge limit, so you can upload as much as you want. These are all accessible to us UM lecturers, so let's make use of it. Yeah, so you can just upload whatever you need, all your recordings, so don't need to worry about uh, anything much. So I'll, I'll stop this. Stop this here. Um, and then uh, someone asked about um, the uh, apa ni, uh, attendance just now. So um, if you don't know yet, yeah, if you know, it's okay. If you don't know yet, it's here. Participants. Yes. And yeah, participants. So you're all here. Yes. So these are all of us here. What we can do. Okay, your students just click here. Uh, okay, only administrator can do this. You can click on this three button, then they will say, they say allow uh, to download attendance. So what you will get is something like this. Name, so at when they join the timestamp. So Dr. Ang, Dr. Bichin just now asked uh, if there's a timer. I don't know about the timer, but I know about this timestamp. You could see the student left and join, left and join. So um, as as a conversation warm up or you know a rapport building material with the student, you can go to the last student. Ah, Wong Posan, you just join in, eh? You just join in at twelve fifty three. Did you wake up late? Ah, you know if, if the rapport is there, lah, you can do that. Kalau dah biasa kawan kawan kan? So um, you can actually see this and uh, they can they can they can they can see that you can see them join and left, join and left. And we could understand that probably the line wasn't good. So they have to join and left, join and left. Yeah, these are all the attendance. So um, my preach to you is to use if you uh, you if you have yet to uh, I'll share now, to explore the many other softwares out there, make full use of your own spectrum. Oh yeah, I want to show my own spectrum class as well. Make use of your own Spectrum, your own Microsoft Teams, because these are the um, the uh, default one that we already have. Okay, if you if you are ready to go beyond, you're more than welcome to go beyond. But um, otherwise, uh, you can use the ones that uh, you already have. Okay, uh, let's go to the question session. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, okay, doctor, is there any question that I haven't addressed? Students peer assessment, student self-assessment to minimize lecturer's assessment. Uh, I do this as well, uh, peer assessment. I make a Google form. Okay, thing about peer assessment is if they don't, if they are not confident that their peers will not, if they are not confident that, is, that it is, um, Anonymous, okay. They are worried that their friend will see what give what score they give to the other friend. They will tend to give all five marks to everyone. So some of my colleagues they produce a word file and they put it up on Spectrum. Okay, all the scorings are there. So um, somehow students don't believe that they will be that their answers will be anonymous. So they takut kawan dia tahu dia bagi skor macam mana macam mana. They will put all five. So we will not get a, we will not get a true assessment. Sayang, awak tengah meeting. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so uh, what I did was I did a Google form myself and all the students name are there and they don't have to identify their themselves at all. They just click their group name and the group name will bring them to their group mates, including themselves because I don't know who they are. They will just call. So then I will get a very. Uh, I hope it is a very honest and very true uh, reflection of uh, each student's contribution. So that's one thing I realized about peer assessment. They they tend uh, they tend to give full marks to everybody because you know they are afraid somehow somewhere their friends know that you know so it will it will disturb the group dynamic and yeah, something like that. Uh, eh. Is there any question that I haven't addressed or we haven't addressed? There's a feedback form on the chat section. Umu, maybe you want to copy paste that and and put it in the last uh, chat so that people can see. Um, Dr. Oh, Azhar, there's a question. Kat mana ya? Uh, by Dr. Safia. Is it the 250? On student? average, I usually ah. have around 200 students okay. in one class. What would be the best assignment that I can give to them that would benefit them but not burden me when it comes to assessing them? Okay. Okay. Um, I have. Nanti mama help Nana, okay? Okay. So on average, two hundred student in one class. Um, I would go back to my reflection in the beginning of the session, where I give small number, but meaningful assessment. So, one way to cut down the number of assessment in order for us to uh not mark too much is to give them in groups and then for us to identify each group um contribution is by you know if one way is from the group um report or that group assignment we identify siapa buat apa siapa buat apa yang mana so the marks are given based on their individual contribution of each part and uh, there's also a shared mark in the discussion section or in so there, there should be this is my opinion. Eh? In one assignment, there are parts, so, uh, part A, which is comprised of individual marks, individual contributions. So this one, they will be marked individually. And the other part is the group contribution. So make it clear from the beginning that um, this is a group work, but there will be individual component. This is one way. The other way is to have peer assessment. Like I said, you are marking them as a group but the group marks will be affected by their contribution. And so this group, this contribution bit is the one that you give through anonymous uh, peer assessment. So it should be anonymous. Otherwise, they will tend to give all five marks. Um, uh, one other advice that I would suggest is uh, one assignment for one LO. So because you want to, because if usually we have three or five, three to five LOs. So at least you have three, let's say you have three LOs. So at least you, there's only three, three big tests or three big assignments that you're going to give. You don't have to make everything marked. You don't have to make everything marked. You can have assignment that is not marked, but you discuss it in class. So the way you address and, and uh, zoom in into the assignment is by having them submit the assignment and bring it as teaching material for the next coming class. So the next coming class as a teaching material, you pick up balik. Pick up balik, so you go through what they answer, what they answer. So you don't have to actually mark, mark, give marks, give marks. And uh, perhaps not everybody will, will be, not everybody's point will be addressed, but they can, you can ask them, did anybody put anything different that I didn't address? You know, so it it's a two in one thing, making them as a group assignment. At the same time, uh, you use that as a you know flip class because there's only so much rounds of you doing uh, recorded classes. After a while, even after two classes, your recording will be the same. So your lecture notes are uh, almost the same. So dah habis, habis, habis idea dah nak, 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 nak during the class synchronous session tu nak cakap apa lagi dah, you know. So we can use the the material that you give as assignment, not for you to mark, but for for them 
to put in and then you can use that as a teaching material or discussion material or discussion point in the following class. So those are the ways you can you can do lah. So 200 students, I haven't got a 200 students class, but uh, if you could identify the ones are really meaningful ones, then you want to you want to mark them. But if you're too many, uh, reduce lah, reduce. Focus on quality instead of quantity. Okay, Dr. Safia, okay ke? Ataupun uh, you have any perspective that I haven't addressed? Okay, Dr. Azwa, thank you so much. <laughs> you may great. have you may have your your perspective that oh, tak boleh tak boleh pakai ni Dr. Azwa punya cadangan ni. No, 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 no. That will be that will be okay because um the number of because sometimes uh we felt like when we do a group um you know the, the group assess uh, the, the group project sometimes not everyone will contribute in the same way so um sometimes there will be free riders especially when it comes to 200 students sometimes we can't afford to have only three person in a group so sometimes you have to make a group like a, a bit larger uh like a five to seven students otherwise it's you know it's really we don't have you know time to actually assess all their uh, assignments but your your way is actually quite great because uh like you said we don't have to do the marking on ourselves but rather than we leverage that to the other students you know in order to to um to make sure that the other groups are actually understand what they're actually doing so that that would be a great idea thank you so much i really appreciate that Thank you. You're welcome. Because sometimes uh, us lecturer, we feel that everything is on us. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, just, um, but especially during COVID times, everything is online. Everything, so it becomes multiple amount. The the one that we felt before is only this much. During COVID times, it's like double and triple the amount of of um, right. effort that we have put to put in. So, um, I think. I think uh, if we if we pick Ya Allah anak aku ni memang aku enter frame sikit budak kecil tu. Ha tu dia. Mama 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 dia nak masuk juga tu tapi blur tak apa. Yeah so if we pick on the ones that we really want to evaluate maybe the N ones that the NLOs ones yeah. but the one that in between uh, we can use as teaching material as reflection points you know. That would be great. Yes. <laughs> any any other question? Yeah, let me attend my daughter. Okay, this is what I have to do sometimes in class. <laughs> I have a four-year-old who who is I don't know, tak cukup kasih sayang ke, terlebih kasih sayang ke, tak tahu. Anyone? Any more questions? Mama, otherwise they will mama, mama. I, I think we don't have any more questions in the chat area. Okay. Uh, let's give like a minute for anyone to like maybe unmute their mic if you have any question, or else we will end the session at twelve ten p.m. Okay. Mm. Mm. All right, uh, no more question. Okay, uh, so thank you everyone. Thank you Dr. Azhar, Dr. Alwani, Madam Shirin. And thank you all the participants. Bye. Bye. So uh, the recording will be available here uh, at Teams. And also we'll put the link in our website. And also will be available at, uh, in our YouTube channel. So we will share that with you. Um, please don't forget to fill up the feedback form. As uh, your feedback is crucial to us for us to improve our upcoming training. So thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.